Timber Talks is brought to you by Wood Solutions. Stay up to date with the latest in timber, the building material that is strong, safe and sustainable. Here is your host, Adam Jones. Hans Blass is a professor of timber engineering at Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and is world-renowned on his work into innovative and reliable structural timber connections. He is the author of the book Timber Engineering Principles for Design and the previous winner of the Marcus Wallenberg Prize for his significant contribution to forestry and forest industries. So he came to Australia for the Pacific Timber Engineering Conference, PTEC, where I was lucky enough to catch him and talk to him about connections, sustainability, and get a taste for how timber is developing in Germany. So as we were speaking at the conference, you're going to hear a bit of background ambient noise, so bear with me, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy it all. So without any further ado, we'll get into the interview with Hans. Well, I'm a structural engineer. I finished university in Karlsruhe in southwest of Germany in 1980, then went to work in the concrete industry and uh, for yeah, ecological reasons really, I uh, decided to switch to timber and I, then I wanted to uh, join a timber company, but then uh, there was a possibility to join University of Karlsruhe as a PhD student. So I did my PhD in Karlsruhe, then left for one year to foreign tech in Canada as a postdoc. After that came back to Karlsruhe and left for the Netherlands. We, With my family we were there for four years. I was professor for timber structures at Delft University of Technology and from then I came again back to Karlsruhe and since 1995, I'm Professor for Timber Structures at Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Well, timber engineering certainly has changed a lot during the last, let's say, two or three decades. What we see today is really a move upwards, uh, which has been made possible by three main reasons. One reason is the possibility of machining timber with computer-controlled machinery. The second reason is to have the um, mass timber products available, LVL, CLT, Glulam. And the third reason is connection technology, which, which has evolved also to a high extent. Mm. And at first principles, what are the connections trying to achieve? Because this is the area where I, I, mm-hmm. I think you've focused most of your career on That's researching right. in this area. Yes, that's right. What a connection wants to achieve is to, let's say, balance member capacities. So if if the member capacity can be matched by the connection, then you can design economic timber structures. If connection capacities are below member capacities, then the members are over-designed. So... Good connections and uh, strong connections are important to get member sizes down in timber structures. And we worked on that and have reached nearly 100% efficiency, we call that efficiency, in timber connections, for example, using self-tapping screws in softwood timber members. Now we have the challenge of uh, using more hardwoods and uh, we have to repeat the exercise basically. If the connection can only carry 50% of the member capacity, then you own, you need 50% of the member size really just to accommodate the connection. You wouldn't need that if, yeah, if the connection would be stronger. And what are so you, you're obviously from Germany. What what can Australians take away from all the research in in Europe? How much of that can be translated? Since Australia doesn't have a big problem with earthquakes, I think you can transfer almost everything which has been developed not only in Germany but in Central Europe, in uh, Switzerland, Austria. They also have contributed a lot. And um, I don't know about your building authority system, but technically you could use all our solutions and partly you are using them. For example, the... uh, connectors which are prefabricated in the workshop and then on the building site just being fixed or hang hung in 
Uh, you could all use these um, long screws, fully threaded screws, both for connections as well as for reinforcements. All these solutions are readily available also for application in Australia. And have you, are you familiar with the Australian standards AS1720? Do you think it's, uh, do you have any comments on, on how we use that? And do you think the Johansson theory is something we should be applying yes. in Australia? Obviously, you use tables with uh, fixed values or capacities for connections, which is a non-flexible solution, I would say. It's easy for the engineer for maybe an everyday task, but if it gets more complicated or if you get out of standard cross-section, standard situations, it's very difficult then to get appropriate connection design. And to my view, you should keep these tables for, let's say, simple jobs, but you should in parallel allow, for example, the Johansson model or the extended Johansson model, uh, the European yield model in general, to uh, be applied also in Australia. This would create more freedom to those designers who are familiar with timber structures. Well, the market for timber connections is so much larger than for steel or concrete structures. Even if you look at steel structures, there are bolted connections, basically. Of course, welded connections as well. But if you look at mechanical connections, it's bolted connections. Whereas in timber, we have six different types of double-type fasteners already. And then there are so many proprietary connection systems, it's very difficult to keep the overview and to, let's say, uh, look for the right connection for the right task. Most connections may also be used in a fire. We can maybe distinguish between two approaches. You could use contact connections. They may be prepared also by CNC machines. And there, there are no steel parts, no metal parts. You can just design them like a member. So you get a charring layer, you calculate the charring layer and then you check whether the connection is still uh, sufficiently strong. The other way is to use the traditional connections, including maybe steel plates, bolts, dowels, nails, screws, whatever. And then you just hide the steel parts in, in the timber, so you protect the steel with a layer of timber thick enough to let, provide a charring time required. And you are obviously an avid researcher. What is some of the research you've been working on recently? Well, the most exciting new product is certainly Beach LVL. Beach LVL is a hardwood LVL. It's just a normal LVL, if you like. The challenges are the high density of more than 800 kilogram per cubic meter. The uh, exciting thing are the high strength values. Tensile strength about uh, three times as high as for glue lamb, for softwood glue lamb. Uh, also, embedding strength and withdrawal capacities are much higher. But there are many challenges regarding connections. For example, you can't just put a nail or screw without pre-drilling into this material. Even if you look at um, traditional connections with bolts, flitch plates, uh, you might see other failure modes, new types of failure mode. And uh, we all need to cover that and, and understand that before you can freely use this new material. What we can do with this new material is, for example, large timber trusses. We haven't seen large timber trusses in the last decades, even though trusses are a very economic type of structure. You, you don't use a lot of timber. However, due to the large number of connections, they are expensive because work is as expensive. And if we are able to, again, optimize the connections, get some standardized solutions for connections, then we are able to do economic trusses and replace huge glue lamb beams, for example, with depth of two or two and a half meters. And in this respect, we should look more at LVL with cross layer, so cross banded LVL. You could argue that a tensile member made of cross banded LVL is less strong 
than a similar member made of parallel LVL. This is true. However, again, look at the uh, balance between the connection capacity and uh, the member capacity. You lose some member capacity, but you win a lot of connection capacity because LVL, cross-banded LVL, will not split and therefore fasteners will carry much more load than in a product where you only have parallel fibers. At the moment we are doing a research project about a new type of um, timber product made from sawn timber where the timber is not sawn in the traditional way where you produce rectangular cross sections but where you produce trapezoidal cross sections so you cut the cross section like a cake and by doing that and arranging the pieces intelligently you can use 85% of the volume of a log instead of 60% when we do just by changing sewing technology but there's much more behind that because you can't use tra trapezoidal pieces so you have to re-glue them this is difficult you can't plane them and so on there's a whole technology behind it but you, we are nearly there of uh, applying this product and um, with a much, much higher yield from, from logs. On day one of this conference, Hans, when I first met you, you mentioned how in Germany they're actually bringing in legislation about timber relative to concrete and steel. Can you tell us a little bit, little bit about what's happening in Germany? Yes, there's a bylaw at least in two provinces now in Germany or in two states that uh, government buildings which are newly erected or rehabilitated need to be done in timber uh, unless it can be proven that a timber solution is not possible. The reason for that is the climate change and the uh, necessity of reducing our CO2 emissions. And it's part of an agenda we have in Germany, uh, Carta Timber it's called, where we also want to use the building sector which produces a lot of greenhouse gases to well the, the building sector has to contribute to a reduction of greenhouse gases and using more timber structures is certainly one solution to that i'm not a friend of doing everything in timber each material for each purpose and we will do the foundations and the basements certainly in uh, concrete but uh, we can do much much more in timber and we should do that and what do you think about the future of timber in general? Yes, well, it depends who, what, who or what excites you. I think it will be exciting. We will see much more markets in, uh, for example, four to ten storey buildings. Um, for example, for offices, for accom accommodation and things like that. That will be a huge market in the, in the, near, in the next ten years. And uh, this will take a lot of research and development, but it, we will build much more in timber. In the last 20 years, the share of timber structures in the one and two family houses in Germany increased from about 15 to 30 percent. So it doubled. It's, it, it's not <laughs> by far not as much as in Australia, for, but still there's a move upwards. And if we see a similar move in, in uh, four to ten storey buildings, then this will be a huge opportunity for timber and timber structures. Something I hear a lot about professors and industry experts heading toward the end of their career is that they always stress the importance of the older generation to transfer their knowledge and wisdom onto the next generation coming through. So do you have any advice for any younger engineers listening right now? Um, well, this is difficult to answer really. The market for structural engineers, and I only know it from Germany, at the moment it's crazy. The young people leaving the university, they send out five applications, they do five interviews and they get five job offers. And um, so it's very difficult at the moment to find engineers, really. And this is now, this goes on for five to ten years now, and it doesn't look like it will end soon. So in terms of career planning, it just doesn't matter which material you follow. 
but also timber offers really very very interesting uh, uh, jobs and and things to do and um, my experience is timber is attractive to people uh, this starts at the laboratory in a university when our steel or concrete colleagues come into our laboratory in the timber laboratory they also always say hmm it smells good here <laughs> it doesn't stink like in a, in a steel lab when they are welding or something like that and uh, and it's similar if you go to a building site it's much nicer to check a timber structure compared to a concrete or a steel structure <laughs> If you've got a question about wood, I recommend you check out the Wood Solutions website. It's the world's biggest website on wood, and on it you'll find the technical design guides. So right now there's 48 of them, with that number growing all the time, where we get Australia's leading experts really going deep and detailed in a range of different topics. So if you've got a question, or if you want to just upskill yourself in timber design, then go and check it out.